Hi students, we are back and it's time to trim this picture and place a handle on it. Before I begin, I need to determine where my foot ring on the bottom of my picture is going to go. And to do that, I take my needle tool and I poke a little hole right where the floor curves up into the wall. I poke on the other side and then I can see here that this is where my foot ring should go. It's approximately where the floor curves up into the wall. So I'm gonna take my pitcher and I'm gonna set it upside down on my wheel. Now, occasionally you'll have a pitcher and you'll notice that it's not quite level because the lip of the pitcher sometimes pushes up the pitcher a little bit on one side. Now, if that happens to you, you might have to level your pitcher just a little bit with a little bit of clay underneath the lip to help you determine that your pitcher is level on top and stabilize it. But my pitcher is pretty level because the lip was very level when I placed the spout on it when I threw it. So I'm gonna get my wheel going and I'm gonna to start to center my clay. I'm gonna use my needle tool and I'm gonna make my first line or my first mark going around. I can see here that my picture is not centered. Here's the line, but on the other side, there is no line. So that means that I need to nudge my picture a fraction of an inch and push the area that does not come around and meet my tool out to the outer edge of the wheel. Now my clay is centered because my line is going all the way around. Before I begin, I'm going to take some lugs and I'm gonna carefully lug down my pitcher form in at least three spots and I hold on to it so it doesn't move or scooch a little bit while I'm trimming. I'm gonna get my wheel going and I'm gonna take my needle tool and I'm gonna determine where I poked that hole through and then draw a foot ring on the top so I know how far to trim in. Now, I'm gonna take the flat end of my trimming tool, and just like we trim our other forms, we trim in and establish where our foot is going to be placed. Then from there, I trim the exterior of my pitcher, and as I've always taught you, you wanna trim the outside first and flow the trimming into the form and into the curve of the form. So I really sort of look at the profile of my pot and I wanna trim my form so it flows right up into the foot. I don't wanna have a really stark undercut with my form, this should all flow together and have a nice curving shape that's complemented the whole way down to the foot. Okay, so I have a little wobble, which is normal because I fast dried this pitcher in front of the fan in order to trim it. But for the most part, the foot of this flows right into the curve of the form and it doesn't tuck in, so it has like a nice symmetry. I'm gonna clean up the top and now I'm gonna trim out the interior of my foot. And this is when I hold my tool like a pencil and I hold it very firmly because it often feels like the clay wants to just grab the tool out of your hand. 
you can see when I trim that I'm touching my form all the time to make sure that it doesn't lift off the wheel accidentally. Okay. So now that I've trimmed my form, I'm just gonna run my sponge over this and get it smooth. I'm gonna carefully remove the lugs and remove the pitcher from the lugs. And then you can see here that I have a nice trimmed foot that flows right into the form and follows the curve. So now I'm going to put a handle on my pitcher. First, I'm gonna clean up the rim where the lugs were attached and I'm gonna take a clean work surface here to attach my handle. So now that I have my rim cleaned up and my form is nice and clean, I'm gonna take a piece of clay, approximately the size of a ping pong ball, and I'm gonna roll this into an elongated carrot shaped coil. And I wanna make this handle a little longer than the length of my hand, the length of my palm. I'm gonna take this coil and I'm gonna flatten it just slightly. And then now I'm gonna cut the end at a slight angle Score this, set it down, grab my pitcher, and I'm going to determine where I'm going to place my handle. I like to place my handle directly across from my spout. I place it about an inch lower than the rim of my pitcher so that I have good leverage later when it's full of liquid and I can pour it easily. You wanna make sure that you place your handles directly across from your spout. Sometimes you can kind of place them a little cockeyed and you don't wanna do that because it should have symmetry across the whole form. So now I'm going to dip my handle in a little bit of water. I'm gonna add a little water to the surface of my pitcher and I'm gonna firmly attach the handle to the form. I wiggle and jiggle and attach this. And then I'm gonna blend in the handle to the form and make sure the attachment is really well done. Now, we're gonna be pulling this handle from this pitcher and that is going to be something new for you guys, but this is a way a lot of potters create handles on their forms. So using a lot of water, I start to pull the handle and I use the water and the friction of my hand to stretch out the clay into a fluid shape. I turn my handle in a couple different directions and I'm squeezing between my thumb and my first finger. As this becomes more liquid and fluid and it reaches a nice length, I'm then able to grab the tail end of my pitcher and attach it to the base of my form. And I don't usually score this area because the clay is so wet, it sticks really well. And I spend some time blending this in and cleaning it up. You're looking for a nice curve, a nice upward curve to your pitcher. You're looking for your pitcher handle to be directly across from your spout. 
and for your hands to be close to the form, but not so far away that it feels unwieldy. So here's our picture and here's the pulled handle. Thanks students.